Greetings and salutations, humans. This is your favorite bot, Putin bot, and I just want to welcome you all to the channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today, I'm going to kind of go along with the theme that I did with my previous video about Umbral, about champions that are underrated, in my opinion, or champions that people think only have one use. For those of y'all who haven't seen my previous video about Umbral Enchantress, a lot of people just think she's only good for the arena because I don't really understand her kit. And the champion I'm going to go over today is even more underrated than Umbral is. A lot of people think that the champion I'm about to showcase right now is at best a decent single target nuke. I'm going to show y'all how she is so much more if you build her around the right kind of team. The champion I'm talking to you about today is Aboro. Aboro is a Shadowkin epic. She is void, which I really like. That means she does not have any kind of weak affinity matchup like, say, Ninja does, for example. He's magic. He's going to struggle against force. Aboro, because she's void, she has no weak affinity. So I'm going to kind of go over her first, the gear I've got her in, and the stats that I have her with, her masteries, and then I'm going to explain to you how I use her. And if you have this champion, how you can use her as well to help you progress your account and how to get some real utility and real work out of this lady with her hat. First and foremost thing I want to kind of go over, I love her model. I like the way that her sword looks. For those of you who played EverQuest back in the day, the way that the leaves are coming off of her swords, it really kind of reminds me of the Druid Epic, if y'all remember that. I know, going way back, it's a throwback. But, hey, I love EverQuest, and that's what these swords remind me of. It reminds me of the Nature Walker Scimitar. Her total stats that I have her in. Um, accuracy is 214, because I use her in dungeons. A little over 200 accuracy is really all that I need. I do run her in Doom Tower as well, which I will show here. And because in Doom Tower you do need more accuracy, I pair her with champions that have an accuracy aura. Uh, Contra is who I use her with in Doom Tower most of the time, and I'll explain to y'all why here in a minute. Uh, health is 35,000. Uh, 35, little low, could be better, but just like y'all, I'm working with the gear that I've got. Her base attack, I'm sorry, her attack stat is 4.5 thousand, just under 4,600. Defense is 1600, very squishy. Speed is 213. Her crit rate, and I, I can hear you all saying now, but Putin! She's an attack based champion. Why doesn't she have a 100% crit rate? It's because she doesn't need it, and I'll explain to you all why. And so that gives me more flexibility to work on crit damage, which, to be fair, is a little low at 200%. I would love to get that up higher, but. Just like with y'all, I'm working with what I've got. And with her gear, as y'all can see, I'm not running her in any sets. She's in broken sets. I'm prioritizing stats over sets. I've got her in an attack banner. I've got her in a crit damage amulet. And again, I'm looking for crit rate whenever I can find it. I'm looking for accuracy and speed wherever I can find it. Got her in a attack ring, speed boots, for your Aboro, in my opinion, are going to be 100% mandatory if you're looking to use her in dungeons like I have. Attack chest, crit damage gloves, because, because she really only needs 70% crit rate. You can, it's easier to build her out with crit damage gauntlets. And then same thing here with the top row. I'm looking for speed, I'm looking for crit rate, looking for crit damage and attack wherever I can find it. Now, let me show y'all why I keep saying all you need for her is 70% crit rate. First, let's start with her aura. Increases ally attack in dungeons by 33%. Yeah, nice. Her passive places revive on death buff for this champion for three turns whenever they receive a veil or a perfect veil. Her A3 is why you can get away with building her with only 70% crit rate. She increases crit rate by 30% by 30 
and then she increases her crit damage by another 30%, and then she places a perfect veil buff on herself if the attack is critical. If you get up to 70% crit rate, it's going to crit. Also, that ability allows her passive to kick in. Next, we'll switch over to her A2. Her A2 is really nice because it allows her to transfer any debuffs that she has onto a target, and it lets her steal the buffs that the champion has. Now, one thing about Aboro, she is rather book intensive. She is a very intelligent lady. She likes to read. She enjoys her books. This is a champion who I do recommend that you book out. And she's worth it. I'm hoping this video will, will show you why she's worth it. Her A1 attacks one enemy, has a 40% chance of placing a, a decreased defense for two turns. That buffs up to 50%. Will attack all enemies instead if the target is under four or more debuffs. Now again, I understand people are going to say that Putin is, it can be really difficult to get four or more debuffs on a champion. Yeah, I agree, it can be. That's why you build a team around a Boro that's going to allow this to work. She's actually my main defense down in several of my teams, including Fire Knights 25, using this A1. Let me go into her masteries real quick. I have gone down to War Master in the offense tree. If you're using her in the arena, you can make a case for going into Helm Smasher, or you can go into Flawless Execution if you're just looking to pump out more crit damage. Maybe one day I will respect her to go into Flawless Execution, but for right now, War Master does what I needed to do against bosses. I've also gone down the support tree. I've gone down to Master Hexer. It gives me a chance to extend that defense down debuff for three turns. And I've also gone down to Evil Eye. It just gives me a 55% chance of placing that, that defense down. And I've also gone down to Cycle of Magic. Again, just to try to help me get my cooldowns back quicker. Swarm Smiter for accuracy. I've gone accuracy as well for charge focus, and I start off with accuracy here at the very top of the tree. Now let me take y'all for a run here. I'm going to show y'all first the dungeon that I run her in the most, and a good friend of mine, his name is Dead, he has a seer. I don't have a seer, and so he's able to melt the waves, but then kind of stalls out on the boss. Me, I end up having to beat my way through the waves, but I killed the boss faster. I'm going to show you all how this works, and the reason I bring that up, we're neck and neck for how fast we clear this dungeon. Now, at the end of the day, the speed that you beat a dungeon does not matter, unless you're just the whaliest of all whales. But it's just, it's kind of nice having this underrated epic that a lot of your content creators will say is a Vault Guardian can compete with the big boys. So let me show you all this team, show you how it works. I've got a Boro here in the lead. I've got her use, using that attack aura. Her accuracy is enough for uh, dungeon level 25s. I've got the free legendary champion that all of you at the time of this recording are able to get, Ninja. I'm running Skyle the Drakes, who is a daily login reward. I'm running Allure, who is definitely one of the best epics in the game and I'm running cold heart because she is an absolute nuke this team while it does have two legendaries is still is still accessible void rares are fairly easy to get allure she can be a little bit harder to get but you can get her out of sacred shards you can get her out of your ancient shards as well and a is probably the hardest one on this team to get I'm assuming that you have her because you're watching the video. Let me go in and explain how this works. I'm going to start off on auto and then I'm going to be quiet and let y'all see the run. If you're running your run at Boro as your defense down, you want to have turn meter control. You want to have as many debuffs up as fast as you can. And you want 
and if not that, then at least you want to be able to get yourself going faster. So because of that, a lot of people, what they'll do is that they will turn off Allure's A2 and A3, and a lot of people also will turn off Cold Heart's A2. I'm leaving them on. I want as many debuffs out as I possibly can, because I want to get it, the poisons, I want to get the heal reductions out, I want to get the freezes, the leeches, because once the AI gets gets a clue here and a Boros slaps someone that has five or more debuffs on, I'm going to get that defense down up across the board. Right there, yes, I saw it. Everyone has defense down, people are going to start dropping. Another really nice thing about a Boro, that Gnarl Horn that she just killed, he has an unkillable buff. As those of you know, who run a turn meter reducer like a Lure or anyone else, if someone gets an unkillable buff on, and then they never get a turn, the run fails because the, the mob can't die. A Boro with her A2 can steal that buff. It is absolutely amazing. I'm going to be quiet now. Y'all watch the run, and I can promise you this run will never be in jeopardy, and it's it's disgusting. And a Boro is the one doing just a ton of work here. And we're back. So let's go ahead and take a look here at the damage real quick. Not a surprise, Ninja comes in first at 3 million damage because of that HP burn exploder move that he has. It's just, it, it's disgusting. Aboro comes in second place at 1.1 million. And then Coldheart comes in at 785,000. And keep in mind, Aboro, in addition to being our single target damage for the waves, did some work on the boss. Also, she was our defense down. Let's go ahead and take a look here at this uh, shield here. I will keep this. Speed and accuracy, yes please. Thank you on a crit damage set. I will keep it. Let's go ahead and hop over to another dungeon here real quick. Let's do... Let's do Dragon 20. That way it'll just be something quick and easy for us to go through with. Let's go ahead and we will pull out... Let me see here. So we need a win condition for the dragon. Let's uh, pull out Drekstar. We'll go ahead and put a Boro in. That way she can be our defense down. Don't really care about defense. We're going to go all attack. We'll take the Inquisitor out. Actually, no. Let's leave him in. So let's see how this goes. So the way this team works 
We've got Aboro. She is going to be single target damage and our defense down. We've got Skyle for the passive healing and the reses. We've got Ninja going for freeze. We've got Ashak who's going to be going for freeze and turn meter control. Actually, let's do this. Let's go and pull him out. Let's go with Apothecary. And so Apothecary is going to give us some speed. We'll have turn meter from Ashak. We'll have Ninja with freeze. And uh, let's see how this goes, shall we? And that will be quiet, and y'all just watch the carnage. And we are back. The fight's almost over. There towards the end, y'all can see where Aboro transferred the poisons and the weaken onto the dragon. It was kind of unfortunate. She did not apply a defense down on the waves. And frankly, that's just because they were dying too quick. She's, if you're losing her for a defense down, she's going to be better for you if the fight is a little bit longer. I do apologize for that. Not be able to show you all that in the wave, but y'all see how she came on strong there with the actual boss. Now let's see if the lag will let up, so that way we can see who did what as far as damage goes. So not surprising, it's kind of like what it was on the drag on the uh, Fire Knight run. A Boro comes in second place for damage with one with one million damage. Ninja comes in just under two and a half million. Ashak. He is leveling up right now, and Apothecary, he's got some healing, but really, we had so much control in this team, he didn't really even have to heal at all. I'm not sure if he even healed any, to be completely honest with you. He was just there for the speed. Skyle, with her passive, came in at half a million heals. Let's take a look here. Usually, I'll keep five-star gear, but I will keep this. And let me take a look here and show y'all how a Boro does. Let me see here. Where would y'all want to see? Oh, let's let's do Doom Tower real quick. So the the Griffin, the Eternal Griffin. What's nasty about her is that you need to kill her quick with strong A ones and just a lot of burst damage. So what's really kind of neat about the way that the chicken works, she is kind of different from a lot of your other champions in that you don't want to stall the fight out. If you're trying to tank it, you're going to die. It, long story short, you've, you've got a nuke. And so that's how this team is built out. I'm using Tayrell here. He is going to be there for the defense down. He's also going to be here for the for the A3 in case I need to get a stun or some turn meter, some turn meter boost. I've got Ninja. He is great against this boss. A Boro, who is the showcase of this video. And with this, it's just because I just need her. I just need her damage. I've got Alika. 
who is also another hard hitter, and of course, y'all know Skyle. So let's go ahead and hop on in and do this. I'm going to run this on auto so y'all can see, and I'll be quiet so y'all can watch and see how this goes. But y'all, this concludes the guide on Oboro. I do hope that y'all like what y'all saw. If you're sleeping on her, I strongly recommend that you pull her out of the vault. Build her up with a team with a bunch of turn gear. Put her with some champion turbo, lay out some debuffs. She will do some work for you. I mean, is she a cannon? Yeah. But she also has utility other than just nuking. I hope that y'all have enjoyed this video. And if you like what you see, I encourage you to give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, and I will be coming out with content weekly. And I want to thank you all very much for stopping by again. This is Putinbot. I will see you all later.